When you're doing weld inspection, a change in temperature will change the refracted angle in the steel. And that actually has a lot more to do with the wedge than it does the part. If I have a 60 degree transducer and I change the temperature of my inspection, how much of a difference is this gonna make? If I increase the temperature, my angle is gonna go up. If I decrease the temperature, it's going to go down. Let's start with a basic setup. We've got a transducer and wedge on a piece of steel. And we're gonna use Snell's law. This is the equation that you learned in your UT level one course. This equation defines the relationship between the velocities of the wedge and the steel and the angle of incidence and refraction. If we want to generate a 60 degree shear wave in steel, we need to know what angle to cut the wedge at. And we can do that using Snell's law. We can isolate alpha on the left-hand side of the equation and start plugging in values on the right-hand side. The velocity of sound in this particular wedge, which is loose site, is 2796 meters per second. That's a little bit above the catalog value of around 2740. It's not going to matter too much. It's going to work in my spreadsheet, so I'll leave it like that. And the velocity of shear waves in steel is 3250. To solve for the angle of incidence of this wedge, we'll isolate alpha on the left-hand side. We'll plug in those values for the velocities, and then we know the sine of 60 degrees is 0.866, which means that alpha is going to work out to be 48 degrees. We're going to take that cut angle of 48 degrees and use that in just a moment to show you how we can theoretically solve for the angle of refraction when we change temperature. But first, let's do some practical exercises. A nice warm spring day. You can see the calibration blocks are starting to bloom. We've got an IIW block and a wedge sitting in the dirt. That dirt is 60 degrees C. Nolan is going to take the transducer and see if we can find out what the refracted angle is when everything is nice and hot. We're going to move that back and forth. Hit the nice big circle in the IIW block, peak that signal right in the middle, and we're going to find that we got an angle of about 64 degrees. Then we took the calibration block in the probe and put it in the deep freezer right next to the hash browns. And we got that temperature down to about minus 20 degrees Celsius. And again, we're going to check the refracted angle, moving it back and forth, hitting that big hole in the IIW block, and we peak out at about 57 degrees. We just saw as temperature goes up, so does angle. And as temperature goes down, the angle goes down. We can do exactly the same thing with math. I know you're excited about it. So am I, because we're going to plug it back into Snell's law. This is why we found the cut angle of this at 48 degrees. We can plug that into Snell's. The sine of 48 is 0.743. Then we can see that the refracted angle beta is proportional to the ratio of the velocity of the part over the velocity of the wedge. At room temperature, the ratio between the long wave velocity in lucite and the shear wave velocity in steel is about 1.16. When the temperature goes down, the velocity of sound in steel is going to go up a little bit, but it goes up a lot more in the wedge. This means that since the wedge velocity is on the bottom of the fraction, that ratio value goes down and at minus 20, it ends up being about 1.12. On the other side, when we turn the heat way up, we get up to 60 degrees Celsius. The velocity of sound in here goes down a little bit, but it goes down a lot more in the wedge. So our ratio is 1.21. The velocity change in steel over that temperature range is not that much. The difference you see in refracted angle is primarily due to the effect of velocity change in the wedge. Knowing the velocity of sound in lucite at low temperatures and high temperatures, same with shear waves and carbon steel, we can take those values, put them into Snell's law, solve for the refracted angles, and get exactly the same results we got in the experiment. The whole takeaway is this. When the temperature changes, it's going to change the sound path a little bit. You probably won't even notice it, but it will change the refracted angle a lot, and that is going to change where you plot your defects. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please hit the like and subscribe buttons and thanks for watching.